I went to a party recently. And did you now? Yeah. And it was one of those I knew it was going to be like pretty big, like live music. Uh, and like somebody told me that there might be some important people there. So I was like, OK, like, you know, who, when you want to impress somebody and you're going to a party, what do you do? Uh, you Dang. get cute. You bring a few guns, right? <laughs> Oh so, no, that no, <laughs> no, just me. I, okay. I I put on my pretty dress and I twirl. Okay, well, <laughs> I I had heard that there would be a very important city council member there, and I knew that they were very impressed by guns, and so <laughs> I brought three. I was like three, you know, like four, four or five is a little garish, right? Like, you know, one's a little like, you know, what I, what am I, right? Who am I? Um, so, you know, like a couple handguns and then um, uh, one AR-10 and hit it pretty well. It was a costume party. So that was like, I was a pirate. So that was like a, one of my legs. Um, and and it was a great party. We we're having a great time, uh, but, you know, the cops, did show up um and thankfully um my friend Sean uh you know he 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 got me out the back door but another one of his buddies from what i hear um ended up arrested uh and so it was it was something right uh but thankful you know if this person had been like a city council member or something like what <laughs> What? Believe it would have happened, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. And I mean, from what I hear, the party you attended, this happens a lot. Like the police oh, yeah. get called all the time to the, the parties hosted by this person. So total ragers yeah. all the time. Yeah. 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 Um, and there's if, like a car lot on site too. Is it like mm -hmm. a party house? Yeah. Slash used car lot. Yeah, but the it's... used cars are not like up to par. Like this is standard used car salesman kind of thing. So it's more of an elephant graveyard prices. of yeah. cars. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Got it. But so if, if anyone doesn't know, we are talking. Uh, we're joking about Council Member Sean Lalowy of District Two, <laughs> Sean Baby, uh, who it is increasingly, increasingly becoming clear that. Not only does he not live in his district, as we actually uh, originally reported ages ago, uh, but he does not live in the county. Um, there are multiple uh, investigations into this. Uh, the city of Sacramento has hired a private firm. They won't tell us who. They won't tell us what they're doing. It's that private. Uh, yeah, that's how private <laughs> it is. Uh, but apparently that firm is now working with the uh, FPPC, which is the... Uh, what, what is that acronym? Air Political Practices Committee. Yeah, so they're working together on this. Uh, who knows? Hopefully, the FBI is in on this. Like, but it is this man registered to vote from this address. He has voted from this address. Like, he could be in serious, serious trouble if, in fact, it comes out that he doesn't live at this address. Which, like, if you read the B and Cap Radio, it's like, how how does he? Live? <laughs> There's no way he lives there. Well, there is like. Oh, go ahead, Michelle. Oh, I was just gonna say, you know, depending on if he, uh, so if he, if he voted from that address and doesn't actually live there, that's a thing. If he perjured Bellamy. himself on his documents when he ran for office, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the FBI is looking at him, aren't they, for some of his business practices? Yeah. Well, yeah, separate. he's he's also yeah. the, he's got the feds. I don't know if it's the FBI, but he's been. Um, taken to court multiple times now uh, over the treatment of employees, particularly uh, undocumented employees, many of whom have said that he is uh, he is threatened to give them to ICE if they don't just accept the conditions at the workplace. Not only that, he has um, uh, underage people doing uh, work they should not be doing, at least according to this complaint. Um, what I was talking about was there were apparently like nine police calls from yeah. his current address oh, since yes. he bought and the he house said, he said there was only one that he was aware of and he pretended that he was there when this happened but then oh. there's no mention of him in the police report which seems odd because like the police usually would 
mention the you know presence of a sitting council member when they show up to a house. You think he accused the cops <laughs> of lying? I, I love it of lying on eight police reports. And he's like, the other ones didn't happen. I don't know what. Going I'm on gonna here. call Chief Lester. We're gonna get yeah, to the bottom. We're gonna of get this. to the bottom of this. And you I'm know, like, the usually, bottom of this is you don't live there. Usually, his nose is so far up the police department's ass. It's really surprising to right? hear him. I mean, like, there are a bunch of liars. Like, none of that happened. He's gonna pull the <laughs> Republican, like, defund the DOJ. He's gonna be like, yeah, defund Zach PD. They're they're out to get me. It's all political. Yeah. Um, folks. If you haven't yet, like Teresa Clift at the B has done just incredible work on this from the beginning. But one of the funniest turns of this story was Chris Hooks uh, getting the scoop on these nine <laughs> police calls. He actually interviewed Laloi over the phone. There is audio of it on Cap Radio um, on on what is it on Insight? And it is the funniest Um just catching that man in so many lies, uh, I definitely recommend it. I call it uh, to catch a liar, Sacramento <laughs> edition. Because take a seat it is, over here. It's delicious. You just, it, mm, yeah, it's mm. one of those things where it's just like this is what a stereotypical liar sounds like. Like none of this is believable. Oh, hundred <laughs> um, percent. I can't believe you know we've been gone for two and a half months and we can't we hadn't been able to talk about any of this. It's just. It's so nice. It's so nice to see you too. And it's so nice to talk about things that we needed to talk about again, you know? Yes, indeed. Lovely. Uh, well, why don't we get into the rest of the show? Because there's a lot to cover today. Yes, we have a lot to cover. Let's do it. Voices. The things they said. Voices. Some from those days. All the voices heard. Voices. Hello, everyone. You have Kempa. And Flo. And Michelle. Hi. Yay. I like uh, your M, Michelle. <laughs> I like it, too. Uh, so, folks, uh, first episode back since the break. Super exciting. Uh, first things first, guest host today is Michelle Paraset, our dear, dear friend. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. And it's great to be here with you. Hello. Awesome. Um, you are, so you are coming back to sort of the rough and tumble uh, side of Paul, although it was rough and tumble where you were before this too. Um, but you were um, chief of staff for council member Katie Valenzuela here in Sacramento. And now you are back, uh, back out there in the sort of, I guess, state level po politics. Uh, how does it feel? How does it feel like, Good, bad, just different. It's, um, you know, I love Katie Valenzuela. She's fantastic and wonderful. My heart is in advocacy uh, and my mouth gets me in trouble a lot. So um, yes, the bit, the bit and bridle are off and, and I, can, I can do my own, do my own thing now. Although I'm still interested in helping her however she might need me on campaigns electoral or otherwise. Um, and she's got a great new chief of staff, so I'm excited to see what he does. Zach feels yeah. um, to us from the labor movement. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, well, welcome. Uh, Skylar is not here today, folks. Neither is Shannon. Um, they will be here very soon. Uh, but, you know, obviously we're talking about some local things today. Skylar can't be a part of that. Shannon, uh, just coming back from a week off. Uh, hopefully we have her back next week. Um, but let's get into it today. You know, so much has happened in the last two, two or so months, two and a half months. Um, why don't we just start with uh, a little bit of, you know, fuckery going on here in, in Sacramento by the usual suspects. Um who wants to give, maybe I can give a little background on the story of what is now measure O. Um, what What is this called again, this, this measure? That is a great question. What is the official name? The official <laughs> name. Thanks for, thanks for hitting us with the hard questions, Dave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, oh my gosh. Our good friend Howard from the uh, Sacramento area congregations together likes to call it the Homeless Removal Act, which I think is much more accurate than whatever the hell they're calling it. Yeah, uh, the but, Emergency Shelter and Enforcement Act. Of yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. ESEA is what they originally called it, but it is now obviously measure. Oh, that's how it's going to exist on the ballot. So basically what happened was all of these very rich business folks uh, led by uh, Josh Wood of Region Business, uh, Amanda Blackwood of the Sacramento Metro Chamber, um, and Daniel Conway, who's kind of a local politico, used to be chief of staff for Mayor Kevin Johnson. That should tell you kind of the tenor of this guy's politics. They came together and started a very expensive signature gathering campaign to basically create a, um, a ballot measure that would effectively bankrupt the city and or force them to start using enforcement tactics against unhoused people really flying in the face of the Boise decision, uh, which had stated that if you try to move or roust uh, unhoused folks out in the streets, you better damn well have indoor shelter available for them or else that is considered cruel and unusual punishment. It's unconstitutional. They came through with this signature push and it, it scared it frightened the entire city council and um seven of the members folded and said okay 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 we will put this we'll put a vote we'll, we'll put this on the ballot measure for november um but you know you have to not break our bank quite as hard as it looks like you're about to with this uh hyper expensive signature gathering campaign that is being funded by uh, the Sacramento Kings that's being funded by uh, developers like Mark Friedman that's being funded by the richest of the rich in our region who have interests in the downtown area and want to get unhoused folks out of sight, out of mind for them. Is that a pretty good explanation from the beginning here? It is, Dave. And I think the thing I would just add to it is that, you know, you mentioned Martin V. Boise and it has been maybe not a curiosity, maybe just a disappointment of mine that since that decision was rendered, the approach of many cities in this state in particular that I'm more familiar with has been, how do we navigate around this as opposed to how do we create more affordable housing and more opportunities for just housing in general for people? Like, I think that's the part that's most disappointing, right? Is that this is just another way that we're, we're doing that instead of actually focusing on solving the problem. Um, I think the other thing that I would add for context is that, you know, these, you know, essentially rich business owners were doing signature gathering and they just kind of went to council and were like, we don't want to collect signatures anymore because we'd rather save our money. Like they didn't, there was no reason why this could not have just continued to be a signature gathering, you know, uh, um, you know, activity for them. And they got their signatures and had to get them, them qualified. They just decided they didn't want to do that. And so they basically asked the council to do their bidding. And in a seven to two vote, the council said, sure, roll over and play, you know, play dead because that's what they asked. Yeah. As a person who's gathered signatures to qualify a charter amendment in the city of Sacramento, uh, they weren't anywhere close. They were not anywhere close. They didn't. They hadn't hired signature gatherers like to reach the threshold to put a charter amendment on the ballot. It's significant, and they were. I I have a hard time believing. Uh, you know, because Conway got up in front of the council and was like, you know, we're almost there. You know, and they just rolled over. Um, kind it's of surprising. Of but they made go. they made Sack Kids First collect signatures for Measure G mm -hmm. in 2020, and that was the measure to try to secure just some of the existing funding to go to support youth services. They made you know Measure C collect signatures to be able to get rent control in in Sacramento, and then fought that tooth and nail. It's just really interesting to me that. Interesting is the wrong word. It's really disappointing to me <laughs> that our city council will do this for people who have the money to be able to hire signature gatherers and actually put this, you know, on the ballot 
that way, but then we'll make people who are operating in the interest of people who have less money of children, they'll force them to do the full signature gathering. That just I mean it tells you everything kind of you need unconscionable to, know. to me. Yeah, it, it is that they will bend to the the power of money, the the, yep. the power of money in their heads. Uh those are the ones who make or break if they will be on council, which is why it's so important that we support potential members and city council members who refuse money from these developers, uh, from cops, from folks like that. Um, can can somebody get into the specifics of this measure as passed by city council? What What is it? What What is in it? What is, if passed, what does it do? Yeah, so it does some pretty dangerous things. Um, although the, the most recent change is that nothing goes into effect um, until they come up with an agreement with a binding legal agreement with the county. Um, so as some of you may be aware, there's always this conversation about the city versus the county. The city is obviously nested within the county. Um, and that means that we, we essentially have two municipal governments that are responsible for some of our services. And so there's always this question of, is the city overstepping what it should be responsible for because the county is underperforming? And the answer to that is almost always a resounding yes. Um, and so they are responsible for providing uh, human services, which include things like substance use um, support. Um, they're supposed to provide housing navigation services, social work services, et cetera. They're also re responsible for some housing component, right? We pay taxes to both of um, these entities. And so, the, the real question has been, is the county going to come to the table? And so the city council made some changes just before this went on the ballot to require a binding legal agreement between the two entities about who was going to do what and about how much money they were going to put in in order for any of the provisions in this to go into effect. The challenge is we don't know what that's what's going to be in that agreement. Um, they that also can happen lowered... in real time as we're voting on this. Yes. There's like a you know three week time frame when you can mail in your vote. Exactly. So this or can after. happen at any point or after, and so you will have already voted on it and not exactly know what you are binding yourself to in terms of what they're each going to agree to. Um, in terms of the the rest of the measure, it's essentially saying that. Um, people that we're going to do sweeps, <laughs> right? Um, at, that it defines camping as any four people who are not uh, related to each other, who are um, who are residing within like 50 feet of one another. Um, and says so they're saying, yeah, mm -hmm. so they're saying they can break up camps, quote unquote. Right. Um, it's yeah. still it's still very vague on if they would try and like roust a single tent or something. But like, obviously, in the messaging and in the way that Amanda and Josh and Daniel are wielding the rhetoric of the, you know, violently anti homeless folks, that is what they want to do. They want to move folks. Um, but the, the biggie they're saying is like, well, we can break up camps for right. more tents as Flo yeah. is saying. Um, but there's a real problem there. You know, a lot of unhoused women rely on community to stay safe. You need people around you. And what they are doing is, is really a, a, a horrific thing here that is just breaking up what, what is, is effectively community, your safety system, um, and putting folks who are out on the street in, in increasingly more vulnerable positions. Um, and I don't know how any of the, these three folks pushing this can sleep at night. So there's, there's a couple, uh, so I don't know if you looked at the budget. Uh, so Howard Chan was presenting on the budget and talking yeah. about the city manager. The, Yes, uh, the, the 40 million plus dollar deficit that the city can project out for next year. And, yep. and that is the exact number of the budget of the Department of Community Response, which is the, the part of the city that's managing uh, its homeless response. And that includes the money for safe ground and you know our hotel programs and, and everything else. Uh, and it's interesting that he would use that exact number um, so they want to erase all of the work that's been done towards yeah. services and put so it one back of the changes community. that they made was that uh, it's rather than being a percentage of the point in time count, right? That, uh, I think it was down up to 60% of, of folks they would have to have housed before they could start enforcing. Uh, it's down to 600 beds. 
um, which is an interesting number because the county just voted to sweep uh, everyone off the river. And we think that's around 2,000 people. And those folks are all coming into the city. Right. So right. for folks who don't know, the city and county are separate jurisdictions. Yeah. The county is, it, it covers a much, much larger part of land. Um, their budget cities. is, what, six, seven times the city's budget. Um, but the six county itself, the <laughs> yeah, and the, the county <laughs> itself is a much more pu punitive and conservative body uh, the board of supervisors than the city council but that's not it's a low bar there um and so not knowing you know what one hand is doing from the other the city and county haven't worked together on this forever the city passes this decides they're going to put this on the ballot and meanwhile the county just passes a ruling saying that we are going to sweep up all of the camps on our rivers and just get people out of there. We're not, yep. we don't have to tell them no where to go, to go, what to do, yep. none of that. And the question for you, Sacramento, is where do you think those folks are going to go? That's what Michelle was saying, right? Like, yeah. these are into folks, the neighborhoods. They're coming into the neighborhoods. They're right? coming into our neighborhoods. And it's like, you know, I like this is something that's going to impact everyone. Everyone who lives in our neighborhoods, everyone who is currently living unsheltered, having to find a place to go, it's going to exacerbate an already incredibly difficult situation and kind of turn people against each other, which is, to me, one of the most frightening things here, where we should be standing in solidarity with you know the, our unhoused neighbors because so many of us are so close, one paycheck away from being in that position. Yep. These are our people. These are our friends. And yep. what we should be doing is standing up against these incredibly powerful people. But what they're trying to do is exacerbate the physical situation on the ground to turn people against each other. And it's kind of terrifying to think about. And it's, it's kind of happening exactly as they would like it to be planned. Yeah. So already, I could say that being in Katie's office, you know, maybe one in 10 calls were people who were like, I'm really worried about my homeless siblings and we really need to find some, and nine of 10 calls are, let's round everybody up and put them in the camps. Like fully fascist, like don't care about people or what happens to them. They just don't want to look at them, uh, particularly if they're in spandex and middle-aged on a bike trail. Like that appears to be the most offensive right. place <laughs> to see a person experiencing homelessness trying to survive. Um, it just know, sucks so that the squeaky wheels are the people who suck. Like, because they, because I don't think it is. I don't think we are at number no, nine to one. I don't think so. But those are the people who make all the noise, right? But they, they're, you know, really entitled folks who spend a lot on their house and don't want to have to see a camp on their way to do whatever it is they do. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're in their council members and supervisors ears all of the time. So that's what they're hearing. Right. Um, and it's, it's really, it's, I, I don't know what, uh, what the city council members are thinking about supervisors suddenly deciding they're going to spend all this money uh, that they have not before uh, to produce this great plan around social services and mental health and addiction services. Uh, I, why? Why would they do that? They've never done it before. Um, you know, I haven't heard them produce anything except, you know, more you know, the sweeping folks off the river and the critical infrastructure. So they, they did that one as well. You know, and I think they're defining critical infrastructure as everything from parks to schools, bridges, uh, not too dissimilar from the city's critical infrastructure plan. Uh, so we're, we are creating this um, landscape of, of punitive measures, of misdemeanors and enforcement and yeah. sweeps. And we haven't offered anyone a single bed. We, no one has anywhere to go. You know, our point in time count, we knew it was low. Like we were getting reports on how low and uh, how much of an undercount it was weeks before it was announced. You know, 10,000, 12,000 is an undercount. You know, and we're, they're saying, you know, 20,000 people are homeless in the city of Sacramento at some point during the year. We're going to do right. all of this enforcement and we're not creating a single bed of housing. Yep. At, 
There's nowhere for anyone to go. I, I, a reasonable person can't look at the situation and think that it's going to be good, that it's going to be okay, that, that anything good is going to come from this. I think that's what's the, Including go ahead, the ability Flo. to like, so it also gives people the ability to sue the city if right. <laughs> essentially right. if they are, if their eyes are offended by the visibility of homelessness, which is just absurd. Um, and, you know, our friend, Sean Lowey, um, council member district from, two, Sean from, baby, <laughs> I was going to say council member from Granite Bay, who is, uh, uh. you know, interloping <laughs> uh, in, in district two, um, you know, essentially said on the record last week during, during council meeting that like all homeowners are NIMBYs. And I was like, that's not true. And you know, to Michelle's point, maybe that's who, you know, his office is hearing from more than not, but that's not a representative sample. Um, and as someone whose, you know, background and profession involves, you know, understanding whether or not samples are representative, like, I can tell you the people who call in to, you know, a council member's office do not represent any constituency except people who will call a council member's office. The asshole constituency, the John Frias Moraleses of Sacramento, right? Like they, he is the leader of this little enclave of just shitty people. Uh, what is the name of this neighborhood? Uh, uh, McKinley Village. McKinley Village. Um, and I don't know if you like. I went on next door for the first time in ages today, and I just checked out McKinley Village. It is all him posting hateful, anti-homeless shit, and I'm like. Oh my God. And like everyone in McKinley village being mad with him. And then I clicked where I live downtown and I'm like, it was like birds chirping and like, but like butterflies and like, Hey, you know, <laughs> I'm making a run to the dump. Does anybody need any, like, like these people are just like cancers to their neighborhoods. Uh, and it's just, I don't know. It, I really do think that uh, uh, back to your point flow, that it is a minority of, of the Sacramento community. It's just a really loud one with a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's interesting is there's a lot of people who actually make money off of this, right? So you've got your PBITs who are collecting millions of dollars, right? PBITs Scare are uh, business, uh, the neighborhood districts, uh, the businesses that are sort of like collecting together for political purposes. Yeah. And so they, there's uh, you know, essentially a tax. There's money that businesses and, and some property owners pay to their local PBID and they're supposed to come in and provide quote unquote clean and safe environments. Uh, and, and one of the things PBIDs do is apply to the city uh, for lots of grant money, you know, to, to police their area, right? So they're moving people along, ostensibly connecting people with services, but you know, they say, hey, do you want any help? And people are like, no, man, you can't give me any help. <laughs> you know? And, you know, they write reports and then they get like millions of, of dollars uh, from the city. Um, so it, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how how they respond. Um, if they're going to want more money to, to help enforce this. I would yeah. be surprised. So we have about a little over two months to fight this. Um, and it's going to be a big fight, but I think we can win this. Um, you know, uh, the strong mayor fight, uh, they were grossly out, um, you know, spent as well, but, but, you know, we still beat out the, the business interests. So this is winnable. Um, the big thing is messaging, uh, coming to people with clear eyes and clearing their eyes of the nonsense, uh, the, the bullshit, the, uh, crocodile tears that Amanda's saying when she's like, there's a human rights crisis, like bullshit Metro chamber. Like that's the funny thing to me, these folks trying to like co-opt the language of the left, um, in yep. order to push forward their violent legislation. I think that like, that might be the grossest part of it to yeah. me. Um, but I, I think we need to to let people know just precisely who these people are, precisely what they're trying to do. Um, and and correct me if I'm wrong, but the messaging against this is three pronged. It's for your neighbors, folks. It is cruel. It's costly. And it's more of the same. Right. 
um, and, and think about who you're talking to when you do this, right? So for your friends who actually have a heart, unlike, you know, uh, your Daniel Conways and Josh Woods of the world, um, you know, discuss with them how cruel this is, how this is really harming folks who have nothing. And it is literally cruel and unusual punishment. Um, and it's just going to further harm our neighbors who have nothing in a crisis. And sorry, I'm going to get off on a little tangent again. This is a crisis caused by the metro chambers, the region businesses, the politicians, the neoliberal politicians like your Daniel Conways, because these are the folks that in the last 10 years have gutted the mandates for extremely low income housing in new developments. There's a reason we don't have low income housing. It's them. It's the people who are trying to kill and push out our homeless neighbors. Opposed these are the rent people. Control. Yes, they opposed Michelle, you mentioned they opposed the fight for 15 living wages. If you don't have a living wage, you can't pay your fucking rent. This is simple fucking math, Josh. Third, as Flo just said, rent control. Speaking of frivolous lawsuits, Josh, you know, Michelle, I think you know something about this one. Uh, he did a frivolous lawsuit to try and get rent control off the ballot a couple years yeah. ago. Yeah, well, to, to be clear, that was the city suing oh, okay. me. He was a part uh, of the push, though. I, he, he was. was he was a, the I think push. they did an amicus brief, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the city, uh, you know, had to put that measure on the ballot and pay my lawyer $300,000, so. Good. Uh, I wanted to point out uh, the, if you are interested, um, in joining the fight against Measure O. You can do that at knowono.net. So yes. there's a group of folks coming together. I think everybody uh, here tonight is involved in that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see the coalition of community folks coming together. You know, it's labor unions, the Sacramento Central Labor Council took an opposed position and they are a strong uh, they are a strong partner to have on, on a fight like this. We've got, of course, you know, the, the providers, right? The, the folks who are um, helping our homeless siblings survive every day outside, the Sacramento Housing Alliance, Lowe's Fishes, Organized Sacramento, Sacramento Act, Area Congregations Together. I mean, this is faith, labor, and community groups, um, you know, who are opposed to this. And we need to, to kill this and then move on to real solutions, which are yeah. housing. Did you mention the ACLU? The American Civil Rights Oh, Learning. the ACLU. Like, mm -hmm. like literally the biggest human rights organizations in our nation are saying this is cruel and this is disgusting and we need to fight it. Um, yeah. So definitely go to that site, folks. Again, that's knowono.net. And if you want to volunteer, reach out at knowonmeasureo at gmail.com. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a fight. We need everybody all hands on deck. Uh, Flo, were you about to say something? I was, I was just going to say, we kind of alluded to it, but didn't quite mention that there was actually a lawsuit, um, that was filed to keep this off the ballot because of Martin v. Boise. And the judge basically ruled that there are some pretty significant issues with it, but that they can be taken up after, you know, the election essentially, and that they didn't want to be kind of in the position of taking it off of the ballot. Um, so I don't want anybody to think that that was like tacit approval of the measure. Yeah, it was more so not at all. Usually courts say, exactly. do the vote, we'll discuss if it's legal or not after. Right. So when we filed the lawsuit, we were hoping that they would see that it was unconstitutional on its face. Not only was it a violation of Martin v. Boise, but uh, telling people that they can't gather in groups of four or more, um, that's blatantly unconstitutional. Right. Um, you know, there's a few things in here that are challengeable. And I appreciate, uh, you know, them wanting to err on the side of caution and let folks vote. Uh, you know, I've been a beneficiary of that. Um, except the people didn't put this on a ballot, you know, some very wealthy business interests did. Right. So we'll see what and, happens. Exactly. Um, and just again, folks, like uh, the votes in early November, uh, we'll have weeks and weeks to vote by mail in October. Um, and just to drive home the the final two, like we, I said, it's cruel. I think we discussed that very well today. It's costly. 
Um, I think the city um, could spend up to five million per year on um, these sweeps by according to the measure uh, verbiage, plus whatever lawsuits are brought against them by rich assholes that we know like to bring lawsuits against the city. And we know there will be lawsuits because why write it into the <laughs> into the measure if Precisely. you're not planning on using that enforcement mechanism, right? Yeah. So, so, so tell your neighbors who who maybe you know are a little more concerned about like, hey, you know, what are my tax dollars doing? Your tax dollars are basically getting wasted on lawsuits against the city for a non-solution. Uh, and that brings me to the next thing, which is it's more of the same. It's more pushing people around that we have seen for years and years doesn't work. It's not going to work. People will not stop existing if you roust them from a camp, right? So the biggie is, as, as we've all said, it's social housing, it's public housing. We need to build it on a grand scale. And you know who's not going to fight that? Your Josh Woods, your Amanda Blackwoods, your Daniel Conways, because they represent the rich folks whose property values will go down if we actually have affordable housing for people. So the people need to come together on this and we need to fight against this. Anything else? Oh, one last thing. Yes. Uh, if you are looking for someone to come to your organization and speak on this issue, again, noono.net, and we can get folks out to explain to your neighborhood association or whatever group you're working with. Um, our position, uh, we're really looking forward to debates. We're going to crush them. I, know, I love debating Josh Wood. He, you know, I remember when we were debating on uh, the fight for 15, I did not debate him personally, but we were there for this one. It was just lovely. Uh, uh, it's, you love to see it. I love uh, to see it. I, I love what I love about Josh Wood is the time that he put a guy on TV claiming to be a renter in the city who didn't want rent control. And the guy did not even live in the city. And I believe the guy might have been a homeowner, too. Uh, <laughs> this is the kind of politics we're working with here. So so let's do it. Let's, I mean, and roll. keep in mind, like, they can say anything. That's the thing about political speech in our country. Like, they right. can say all of the lies that they want and will. You know, they're going to use their human rights language that they're going to, you know, rob from the left. Uh -huh. uh, but it's not, they don't, they don't care about anyone's rights. They want people to go away and disappear. So I yeah. think we, we need to keep them honest. Yeah, we do. And, and we need to, um, you know, I think by the end of this, uh, I think we're going to beat this in court, no matter what, even if this does passes, but I think we need them to, people need to associate their names with this cruelty. Uh, that's, uh -huh. that's really my mission by the end of this. And I think we'll win. Um, okay, anything else? Should we move on to the next thing? Yeah, let's sure. Do it. Flo, I know you wanted to talk about one of both of our favorite topics today. Gambling. Love yeah. to gamble. <laughs> Big gambler. Yeah. yeah, sure. My favorite topic. Gotta gotta know when to hold them. No one to hold them. <laughs> yeah. No one to walk away way and know mm -hmm. when to uh run. Run. Uh so okay, let's these are two, there are two on a state level today. So like the, in California propositions, there are two propositions, number 26 and 27, that for your layman, for me, before I started talking to people about this, I was incredibly confused and I did not know what was good and what wasn't good. So today you wanted to talk a little bit about Prop 27. Can you talk a little bit about what it is and is it good? Is it bad? I like to gamble on my phone. Why, why is this not okay? Sure. So uh, to start with, California does not allow mobile uh, sports betting. <clears throat> that is not something that's ever been allowed here. If you are trying to use DraftKings or FanDuel or any of those um, online platforms, they are disabled while you're in California. And so that is something that obviously people who like to make money <laughs> from these companies have not been happy about and would like to change. And so that's essentially what Prop 27 is asking the voters is, do you want to allow mobile sports betting? Um, there will be some provisions. You have to be over 21 to do it. You can't bet on elections or high school games and things like that. But for the most part, that's how it's set up. Um, and knowing that that might be a controversial question for reasons we can talk about in a moment, they said, hmm, 
what's the hot topic issue that we can throw in the pot so that people will go, oh, yay, we're going to fund the good. And the good they chose is homelessness. Oh, so yeah, said, we're just we talking about this. Money. I don't want homelessness either. <laughs> yes, they said, we'll take the money and we will just throw it into pot related to homelessness and mental health. And we'll say, yay, we did a good for California. Oh, yeah, um, this is starting to sound real good to me, huh? Yeah, right. That's what they were hoping. The challenges I think that are coming up for this are number one, gaming is literally like the only thing that we have offered indigenous folks mm -hmm. in this state. We have done terrible things. Um, and I don't mean to laugh, I'm laughing at just the absurdity of like, that's all we've offered. Um, and so, you know, the tribal casinos um, have some, some, some level of autonomy. Um, and so this was significantly cut into their ability to do business as usual um, and would require some partnerships and other things that nobody asked for. Um, second, most of the companies that stand to benefit from this are ones that are out of state, um, meaning that they could potentially exploit some tax loopholes, as we've seen happen in New York and other places that have gone down this route, where they promise you all this money, but by the time you've exploited all the tax loopholes, California is left holding the bag and not having much infrastructure in the way of new jobs and things like that coming in. And instead, there's a bunch of revenue that is leaving the state. Um, the third, you know, I'm an epidemiologist. So from a public health perspective, online gambling is much, much, much more likely to lead to problem gambling than in-person gambling. And people are five times more likely to experience problem gambling if they're doing it online. So there's a public health concern around this. And especially the link between, you know, this exploitation, we've seen it happen with the lottery um, and exploiting people with fewer means, um, allowing them to be able to rack up significant debt and lose resources. And this is a real public health problem. It is addiction and it is challenging. You know, um, first flow came from my menthol cigarettes and <laughs> I did not speak. <laughs> For I didn't that often smoke menthol cigarettes. <laughs> then, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep coming for all the good vices, right? You're like, um, oh, gambling's bad. Well, come on, man. Like, give me on, some Online gambling in particular. Um, okay. And, and, you know, and then there's, of course, the, the part of this um, that, you know, is like the tribal sovereignty of just, they are, you know, over 60 tribes in California are saying, please vote no on this. Um, many of the organizations that supposedly are going to get money from this are saying, please vote no on this. Um, so it is confusing. I'm sure many of you have already seen ads. I got a text message on August 10th. I think that is the earliest I've ever received a text banking for a November ballot measure. Uh, I have seen ads on the radio, on TV, on my phone when I'm playing uh, uh, Wordoku uh, or Wudoku. It's just like ridiculous, right? Yeah. Um, and this is like DraftKings and like the, the NGM, big, big FanDuel. names. Yes. And the other thing is like in order to even be able to get into the market, they basically carved out a space for themselves. So you have to be operating in at least 10 states in order to be eligible to be able to get these licenses. <laughs> To then, um, to then be able to operate in California. And there is this like $100 million licensing fee if you're out of state to be able to start this up. But again, you have to already be operating in 10 other places. And then whatever they owe is like reduced from that amount over time. So if they've spent money in other ways and they owe other fees, we're not exactly the legislative analyst office, which is independent, is not exactly sure how much revenue is gonna come into the state after the dust settles. And so it's again, one of those ones where like, you'd be voting on something and not really knowing exactly even what the, if the financial prospects are exciting to you, you're not even sure what you're gonna get. I really love the LAO's report because they're like, this isn't <clears throat> money that would not have otherwise not been spent in the state. This is money somebody would have spent on dinner and clothes and probably other things. And now they're gonna gamble with it. It's the same amount of money the state's going to get. It's just going to be whatever 90% of it siphoned off to these big gaming industries. You know, and the Prop 27 people, they really did, they did their work, right? They did their polling. They figured out what the biggest issue in California is, and it's homelessness. They're not wrong yep. there. Yep. And then they wrote, a, you know, they wrote a, a proposition, you know, that they thought would 
ring the bell for people, right? And then they went around to all the nonprofits. You know, they came to my day job nonprofit and they're like, look what we're going to do for homelessness. And we're yep. like, how did you get homelessness? And they're like, oh, we polled around it. And, you know, we didn't, if, it, if the biggest issue had been climate change, this would have funded climate change, right? So this is just the, this is the carrot to, mm -hmm. to get people to give these folks uh, a, bunch of, a, a bunch of money. So and I was going to ask as much as anyone, but yeah. <laughs> not like this. They also came to my job and asked us to oh, wow. get on board. It's all these people who are, uh, you know, p public advocates of some kind or another, uh, it seems they're coming to. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm glad many folks like you two uh, were not fooled. But I have seen a couple of um, orgs that, that I like uh, on their supporters list, even you know, a local mayor who, you know, despite what we titled episode 24, that iconic episode of Voices River City, I think he's a pretty good faith guy. Um, why would he be in support of Prop 27? Mayor Daryl Steinberg? Because they promised money for homelessness and he yeah. is the homelessness czar for the state and I'm sure someone, you know, probably called up and said he got the same pitch that Michelle and I got about how this is going to be good and blah, blah, blah. And so he came on board. And it's just, I know, pretty frustrating because, you know, here Sacramento is, you know, doing land acknowledgments and really trying to heal some of these relationships with um, the tribal organizations locally, especially Wilton Rancheria, um, Sacramento's, you know, only federally recognized tribe. And then, here they are saying no on this and, you know, and wanting support. And, you know, he came out early so as one of the mayors, I think, along with Long Beach and Fresno um, and Oakland saying, yeah, this yeah, is great. Libby. Like, yeah. Can I ask, you know, Michelle, you're talking about them doing their homework and like it really, they, they did on this um, one with that, uh, that, sort of deal sweetener and two i think they thought who will be our biggest enemies on this who's going to push us against us the hardest and can we find somebody who can support this and they will be our face and they you know you go to their website and it's these very small tribes they got i believe three tribes to support this uh, whereas most tribes throughout the state of California do not, um, I don't know, like it, either of you, like, um, what are some thoughts on that? Like that to me was just like, oh, whoa, wow. Yeah. So I'm looking for the numbers here in the LAO's report, <clears throat> but there's some, let me see, the California's compacts with 79 tribes and 66 casinos in 28 counties. And those tribes pay out of their revenue to those tribes that don't have gaming. They already do that, uh -huh. right? And, you know, there is a uh, tribal gaming is, is tricky, right? Because a lot of them are in relationship with, you know, big casinos in Las Vegas and other places sure. to, to pull this off because a lot of tribes aren't financed to build a giant casino and a hotel and all the things that, are, you know, so there's relationships there, but they're already paying out to, to the smaller tribes who don't have, don't have gaming, right? So this thing they're putting forward in 27, oh, we're going to, we're going to pay all these uh, smaller tribes too. Well, that's already happened. Right? Um, and Flo, I think you have like a great point. Like this is the thing. Like, this is the thing we gave tribes and we're like, okay, well, you can have this one thing. We're going to give you a monopoly on this thing. And it doesn't come close to addressing hundreds of years of bullshit. But I, there's no, I, I, I hope that people will look at this and see that, like, there's no way we can take this from them. Like, we can't do that. That is just unacceptable. Yeah. It just, it just feels like ongoing slaps in the face to a community that has experienced genocide and, you know, erasure and just, you know, subjugation in so many different ways. And 
to to try to undercut them in this way just feels especially cruel. Yeah. Um, any more thoughts on Prop 27 other than this is horrible and and no on it? <laughs> no. Uh, well, can I do we do I even want to ask you this, Flo? Like. Don't say anything if if you all are coming out against Prop 26, because I want to be able to gamble a little on sports on occasion. I, I'm tired of driving to Tahoe. <laughs> we are not. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what the Sacramento Sister Circle Voter Guide is going to say on Prop 26, okay. um, but uh, Public Health Advocates has taken a neutral position on Prop 26, um, in part because we do have obvious concerns about gambling as a public health issue, but we also as part of our deep moral fiber, um, really believe in the sovereignty of tribes and really want to be, you know, strong supporters and allies. And so we have decided just to take a neutral position on it and to encourage people to think about it for themselves um, and make decisions for themselves on that one. So I will likely be voting yes on Prop um, 26 personally, um, just because I, I think that's where my heart goes. Yeah, I'm bummed that I can't bet on elections. I mean, because really, because <laughs> we do we bet know on best, elections, right? We do bet on elections all the time, right? The um, yeah, but I'll probably support 26. You know, what for, is that for, elections betting site? Um, oh god, is there one? oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, I actually like met. <laughs> <laughs> like uh the the right hand woman of the guy who runs that site which i knew very well uh like lives is a neighbor of my aunt and uncle in nashville and i was like oh yeah i know you guys very well i follow follow your odds all the time when i'm following elections um but yeah if we can, i can't vote on that that's fine i'll just make my money elsewhere by card counting <laughs> and by <laughs> My card counting. Well, I've been working this summer. You don't know. Oh it, my though. god! Oh my god! It's it's minus one when a ten or an ace is shown, and then plus one when it's something. Anyway. Okay, um, folks. If I'm, you know, I'm, you know. I'm glad that's what you've done with your. <laughs> <laughs> whatever fills my cup. I've, 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 I believe that's what my I friends are no telling me. To judge. Um, whatever, whatever is part of your wellness journey. <laughs> <laughs> get rich quick you know uh better than making you know a uh a, a covid vaccine in my bathtub am i right it is it's better than that it's also better than suing the city over folks who are unhoused so you also know so true yeah i mean you know all money's not good money so you know that's it. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I think I think we're running close to the edge of the show. Um, I just I want to tell listeners just how um, happy we are to be back um, and thankful we are that you uh, were cool with us taking this break. Um, I think all four of us like dearly needed it. Um, and I'm really excited because we've got all sorts of guest hosts. We've got I've got so many so many wild episodes coming up of folks that 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 finally want to speak on some issues that are really important um and it's it's just i don't know it 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 feels good to to platform folks uh who need to speak out against this very frustrating uh neoliberal system we live in in california and i'm just very proud of everything everyone does and and happy to be back and and you know part of the fight again anyone absolutely. else absolutely any? yeah okay um um you know it's, it's good to be back it's good to be able to talk about these things it's nice to be well rested and well hydrated so thank you for the gift of that time i think we were able to enjoy the summer and live by our you know values of taking time when we need it so thank you for all the support that we got and that we hope that you enjoyed some downtime as well as a listener uh my tuesday mornings were a shit show for weeks because <laughs> i would go to my spotify and i'm like where is this and then i'm so glad you're back just um, radio silence um it's gonna I, be so fun to have you on now too yeah. now you are free michelle I'm free 
I know you were uh, in a position of power, but like you get to be in another position of power and also just enjoy talking shit with us on occasion. <laughs> Wield the mic, Michelle. Wield the mic. <laughs> so fun. I love it. Um, folks, uh, we love what you do. If you love it to please continue to support us, uh, on our Patreon, patreon.com slash voices river city. We're on all the socials. You know how to Google, you know how to find us. It's whatever. We're on all the podcast platforms. Um, we got merch on the website, voices river city.com slash store. Um, there's more things we want to do, but Skylar tells me I shouldn't promise anything without us setting dates on stuff. So I'm not gonna. Thank you, Skylar, for that. That's actually really amazing <laughs> feedback. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I don't know. Anything else? Anything else we want to say? Like, I guess I'm ending us kind of fast. Like, I feel bad. Our first time back, it's going to be like 56 minutes. Well, back in session, please wear your mask. That's what we got. <laughs> That's all we got. <laughs> well, it's an exciting week. So it's the last day or last week of the legislative session, right? We've yes. got some bills coming up that are pretty great. Ooh, so baby. Uh, AB, I believe it's 257. So that's the bill that um, creates a council for fast food workers at the state level. Yes. And that just made it out of the legislature, right? It passed mm-hmm. out the Senate today. Um, and I think I heard- Where's our boy Gav there? on it? Where is he? I've heard that Gavin's going to sign it. That's uh, the scuttlebutt. Uh, and that would be huge, right? That's like, yeah. that'll be huge. Because it's the fast food workers who really- I thought Gavin hated 15, workers. Right? Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I got to be nice for a week. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's got a whole month, you know, to sign or veto. That's or true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but there's a bunch of other bills. And I would love to uh, come tell you all about them. Yes, we uh, need to do an end weeks. of session yes. review. Yes, there's going to be some really good stuff. Some exciting yeah, things. folks, without letting, you know, giving any details, fingers and toes crossed on this, on a few yeah. of these here. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, what a wonderful day to be back. Um, and yeah, why don't we just end it? I'm going to go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go hang out with somebody with the tenants union. Those, yeah. those wonderful people. Yes. Very exciting. Awesome. Um, yeah. So shall we call it? Yeah, we shall. All right. I'm going to go lay naked in my backyard. That's Word. almost as cool as what I'm doing, but yeah, it's, it's my, it's my new self-care thing. Yeah. I'm going to go lay naked in the next door church parking lot. <laughs> that, oh, it's a crime when I do it. I no, it. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. working my way up to public news. Right now, I'm just like, you know, baby step. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, thank you again for listening. So good to be back. And we are looking forward to a bonkers uh, fall season of Voices River City. So we will see you all very soon. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.